I had the privilege of chairing the National Academy's Committee on Underrepresentation in Science. It turns out that only 6% of America's 24-year-olds, of all races, only 6% have degrees in STEM. Now, for people of color, particularly blacks and Hispanics, Native Americans, it's only about 2%. And the, the key here is that what happens is not that people aren't interested in math and science, Large numbers come to college with an interest in engineering or in medicine. The fact is, the majority of students who begin with majors in those disciplines do not make it, do not graduate with bachelors in those areas. For example, I mean, it doesn't surprise people that only 20% of blacks and Hispanics who start with a major in science and engineering will graduate. It shocks people, though, that only 32% of whites who begin with a major in science and engineering will make it, and only 41% of Asian Americans. You put it all together, two-thirds of all college students who start off saying, I want to be an engineer, I want to major in computer science, I want to major in chemistry, two-thirds will leave it. And the number one reason is that they did not do well in the first-year courses. And the fact is, when people say, well, it's a K-12 problem, no, we know we have to continue to improve K-12, but the fact is, large numbers of students with fives on AP exams, with perfect math scores, who go to the most prestigious places within the first year change their majors because they did not do well in the coursework. What we work to do in understanding the challenges of minorities has actually helped us with all students, and it is this. When you talk about high expectations, the question is, what's the background the student needs? What kind of math background does the student need? How are you gonna go about making sure that you've got faculty ready to work with that student? And most important, how will you measure success as you look at what happens with students? So I, the high expectations, the notion of building community among the students. If you majored in science and engineering in this country in the last 25 years, you know that much of the work is based on a competitive basis, that often we're talking about curving the grades, and that rarely have people been taught to work in groups. In fact, usually we call it cutthroat. And everybody knows that you have to be very careful because quite frankly, if somebody else gets a higher grade, it means you may get a lower grade. And so the, the mindset, the culture in science and teaching and learning has to do with a cutthroat approach too often. And secondly, the assumption is most people won't make it. I can prove it to you very easily. If you look at the number of seats in the second year's work, in engineering or in science, you will see it's about one third the number of seats as in the first year's work, because the assumption is most won't make it. And as a result, they, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so the question is, how do you build a community of, of students and faculty with this notion that we can do it, that if you don't do well on the test, it doesn't mean it's over, that you want to build competencies, that you want to use the technology to make a difference. And what we ended up doing is building these communities of scholars, but also what we did that was different was to redesign courses. We redesigned all of the STEM courses, and U.S. News calls us the most academically innovative place around. We flipped the work. We've gotten away from the lecture method as the main method. We have, we're using group work, we're using problems out of the companies on campus. We've got about 90 biotech, IT companies, cybersecurity companies on campus. And most important, we have looked at how we use analytics to understand what's working and what's not working, and to continue to revise what we do. And the idea is that if the students fail, we fail. We always say, look at the student to your left, look at the student to your right. When a lot of us were in college, the dean said, one of you will not make it. That's a terrible thing to say to kids. We ought to be saying, look at the student to your left, look at the student to your right. Our goal is to make sure all three of you graduate, and if you don't, we fail, and we don't plan for you to fail. Give us a hand for that philosophy, please. It's a big deal. It's expecting the students to make it.